Hello everyone, uh, I'm Luna. I'm from Team Daedalus. I'm going to be talking about Cockpit. So today we'll be covering what is Cockpit? A quick demonstration of what you can do in Cockpit. We'll cover the technical architecture of Cockpit, the limitations and some upstream achievements, and finally, a quick Q&A session. So let's start with the question of what is Cockpit? Cockpit is a one-to-one -one web based to manager for Linux systems. It was developed by Red Hat and uh, can be used on servers and personal computers. It's user friendly to all levels of users. You don't need to be uh, you know, a noob at Linux to use it. You can be a terminal fiend and still find a use for cockpit. It's available on many distros. Uh, for example, Debian, Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, Micro, and Tumbleweed. It is designed to be highly extensible, so you can write your own uh, applications for Cockpit to uh, extend it to add functionality and whatnot. So to give you an idea of how powerful Cockpit is, I'm going to take a minute to just uh, do a quick demo. So let's see if... So this is a VM I spun up. It has a few Docker images. And we're going to spin up a web server and open a port. So right away, when you log into Cockpit, you get a overview of the system. So you can get an idea of you know what, what sort of system usage is going on. Uh, quick information, you can configure some stuff like hostname and whatnot. Uh, if package kit finishes anytime soon, we can also update the system. But um, yeah, until then, we're going to take a look at Podman containers. So one of the more annoying things about deploying stuff with Podman is remembering the CLI arguments. So over here, if we quickly we can very quickly add a port. So yeah, we now have a container running. We can look at the logs, see what's going on. Yes, this is running Flask in development mode. Uh, you shouldn't use this in production. So if we go over to networking, so we can configure our firewall. And we add a port. So just uh, slight issue from doing this before. Uh, okay. Should work. Uh, that's funky, it was working. Yeah, okay, there we go, and we can, uh, I thought, um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it should work. Everything breaks when you try and do it live. <laughs> yeah, uh, it should load a Flask web server. It isn't working. Not sure why. Uh, yeah, so if we check on 
So package kit, package kit is behaving not fun right now. So. Oh, I didn't notice. Ah, yeah, thank you. I didn't notice that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we get what it would take a bit of time, a little faster. Uh, so software update. Still loading package kit. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we can can continue. So let's take a look at what co cockpit applications are. Cockpit applications are what we would think of as plugins. They can pretty much do anything if you can program them to do that. Uh, there are currently 27 applications that you can use in Cockpit. Uh, they're developed using Cockpit JS. And a good example is Cockpit TU Kit, a plugin we wrote to work with transactional systems and basically do what the software updates thing does for uh, Tumbleweed. So what are some limitations of Cockpit? Out of the box, Cockpit has rather limited functionality. It doesn't have many applications, and you need to install more to get more out of Cockpit. It can only control one server at one time. There's no you know, way to do mass orchestration using one server. And at the same time, there's no automation. A rather funny issue is that if you enable the firewall without opening ports for um, cockpit, it will lock you out, and you might not be able to get back in. So let's look at the e cockpit architecture. We'll go over how the front end is built, how the back end is built, how they communicate, and finally, how we can write our own application. The front end is written in React.js, and it uses Patternfly for all the CSS stuff. So Patternfly, if you're not aware, is a component library similar to Material UI or Bootstrap React. It's currently only JavaScript. There is no TypeScript. The backend is a basically a HTTP WebSocket server. Um, it's responsible for communicating with the system. It's mostly written in uh, C and Glib, with a few components currently rewritten in Python. So we'll go over how the front end and back end communicate. So we start by requesting the index file. And like any server, we return the front page. At this point, the user needs to authenticate. And after passing it through, we authenticate with PAM on the back end. And if it's successful, we start a WebSocket connection. So at this point, we can send a command, read a file, uh, call dbus, and yeah. The command or instruction is handled by the server, and it sends back a response, which we handle on the front end. At this point, once you're logged in, this is really all you need to worry about. This is sort of the loop that keeps happening. Of course, everything is asynchronous. You don't need to wait for an old command to finish executing to execute another one. So let's look at how we can use the Cockpit JS API to write our own application. Everything starts by importing the API. So plain and simple, import Cockpit from Cockpit. So let's try reading if, uh, the host name from the system. Do note, if you try this on Tumbleweed and you haven't manually entered your host name into 
at C hostname, it's empty. So then we can read the um, file. Since it's asynchronous, we need to handle everything. So we can, if it's successful, we can take the content and just log it out. If we, there's an error, we also log it out. So let's take what this is and go to the next level, a simple application. We can get an idea of how things are really done on the UI side. So because we're using React, this time we also import React. We are Im importing the React namespace so we can use all the functionality of React. We define in a component called application. This is where the entirety of the UI of our plugin lives. So here use state just tells the React framework that whatever is stored here, we want it to continue staying even if the page is refreshed by React. So here we're going to spawn a command, very simple, get the host name. If we have a successful exit of zero, we can set the host name to whatever comes out of cat. If there's an error, we handle it. I expect if you do this, actually handle your errors. And so use effect tells React when the page loads, run this code block. Uh, you don't need to understand too much about it right now. So finally, we can return the host name and display it. So if you're wondering why this looks like a mixture of HTML and JavaScript, it's called JSX. It is quite literally a mixture of JavaScript and HTML. And if we uh, I think there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if we, <laughs> if, we use, if we were to use this in our application, it works. We get our host name. Now you might notice right now we have selected something called starter kit. There's a very good reason for that. There's an upstream repository called starter kit which provides basically all the boilerplate you need to get started with to write a cockpit application. It handles building and installing everything. You don't need to worry about it. Now we'll take a look at some of the upstream achievements uh, we have achieved. So for a long time, SLE Micro, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and OpenSUSE Micro have been listed on the cockpit project website as supported, but not tested. Recently, we managed to upstream testing VMs so that we can actually get cockpit tested upstream. Currently, we're in the process of enabling tests and the like. And in the future, the same is going to be done for micro because we've only done managed to get uh, tumbleweed so far. Other than that, what some of the notable achievements are that we recently rewrote Cockpit TU Kit in TypeScript. So we hand rolled our own types for it, and currently there are talks of upstreaming these types and extending them to completely rewrite the front end in TypeScript as well. Yeah. So now for the questions and answers, if anyone has any questions. I've got sure. Um, so I tried using the starter kit, yeah. and it is so bare bones, I couldn't figure out how to use it. I'm not a web developer. So most of us are probably used to using um, Yast, 
where we have like a, a really specific structure. We plug in information and then we can use it to configure our project. But cockpit, we just get this this blank page and and I mean the the starter kit literally just dumps a string to the screen. It's, that doesn't help me design a web page. I I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so um, that's where pattern fly comes in. Pattern fly essentially allows you to reuse components and get something that actually looks like the rest of cockpit. Uh, gives you bits and pieces. In that case, can you make a tutorial or something for us to follow? Because um, all we've got now is the starter kit and no instructions. Uh, sure, I, we can do that. Okay. Uh, well, I have unrelated question. Uh, I noticed that you can also connect to remote server. And I believe that Cockpit is using SSH for that. Yes. But I... I remember that that you need to your uh, username needs to have uh, authorized key on that remote server, right? No. Uh, so if you do log in, what happens is uh, SSH key is generated and then it's copied over. If you don't already have one, uh, that's copied over. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And also, uh, when you log into a local machine, uh, you need to use only your username and password, right? There is no other method uh, of logging in. So if you do set it up, you can also set up SSO. So uh, the whole Kerbos thing you can set up and have SSO working. Does it support uh, OAuth or LDAP I'm, or you don't know? I'm not too aware. I believe okay. it does. I haven't uh, used it before. Thank you. I have uh, two questions. The first is, is it possible to consume the cockpit API directly without using the web server, or without using the website? Uh, as in like uh, replace the front end? As in like have a, a CLI that you write in Python that you run remotely? Uh, so, I mean, of course, if you can handle the authentication part and do the whole um, web socket negotiation, you can do it yourself. Uh, so I believe Agama did that. Uh, in the past, now they re wrote their own thing. OK. So it's not like a, a well-defined API. It's like just a command stream. Yeah, more or less. That's why they give us a nice API, so we don't need to worry about that as developers. OK. And the second question I had is, uh, for the Podman interface, are there any plans to add support for volumes? I, it, I believe it actually does, does have volume have support. Uh, if you give me a second. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, we have updates, so if you, you can install updates and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you create a container. And in integration volumes. Okay, okay. Good. Uh, could the uh, cockpit reuse uh, Yast components or uh, part of Yast code? I don't believe so. Yast isn't really. Uh, so Yast is its own thing. It's very difficult to use something like Yast in web code. So. Uh, if Yast exposes a DBus API, then yeah, it should be fairly easy, but otherwise, no. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if there's nothing else, we can uh, finish 10 minutes early. Yeah.